And one of the things that I've heard while this exhibit has been up is, wow, I didn't know that high school students could be so creative. And I'm kind of a little amazed at that because my experience working over the past <clears throat> five to seven years with a variety of high school students in the region is they're incredibly creative and energetic and enthusiastic artists. And it doesn't matter whether they intend to be an artist when they grow up or go to art school, just given the opportunity and the chance and the materials, they come up with amazing pieces of work. Hi, I'm Lynn Gavette, and I'm here at the Reese Museum on the East Tennessee State University campus in Gallery A. Figuratively speaking was a challenge to the high school students um, in the region. And we had two high schools participate. There was Providence Academy and University High School. And what the concept was is that the museum has um, acquisitions and lots of lots of artwork and it occurred to me that there was a way to get this artwork out and also get the community more involved and I saw this idea for a project where you take a certain style of painting or a certain genre of painting and then you show it to um, in particular high school students and see what they can be inspired to create off of that and what I decided to choose was the human figure and the Reese Museum collaborated with me by letting me go down into their acquisition collection and pick out all of the different figurative pieces that I wanted. Um, and then we narrowed it down to about 25, I think, and then put it out there in a PDF file for the teachers to show the students and talk to them about it and create an atmosphere where the students could start to create work. It didn't matter what media, that they used. Um, we did do a size limitation because of we weren't sure how many pieces would be submitted and wanted to exhibit them. Um, and then we just let it go and checked in periodically with the teachers to see how things were going. But what is really one of my favorites is the responses of the students to this particular piece. Two of them, the small 3D work and this line drawing, absolutely took off on his line drawing. Um, this one approached it from a slightly different aspect. This student, Michael Bonowitz, um, decided to look at all of the abstractness of it and then recreate it in, a, in lines and colors and abstraction. And I think that the three pieces did an excellent job of bouncing off their inspiration without copying it, which was my um, my idea that they did not just copy something. I wanted them to look at it and then use their own creativity. So as we go along, this piece, I like how these two students bounced off of it. One person, that's um, Finaldo, got really pretty literal with doing another figure in a kimono. This student, Karen, she just went for the colors and um, abstracted what was going on in the painting, which was a very interesting approach. Move around, we come to this piece right here, the tempter of the Bruegel excreting a demon of Bosch is um, Werner's Widener's interpretation of those two particular works. And the students that, um, that use this as an inspiration, took it like as its meaning, not as an actual, because they did a black and white um, exploration, while this one is in very deep colors with a lot of shadow. So it was a really interesting way that this student, Clayton, bounced off this piece. And here, um, we have a sort of funny piece because I did choose to do the human figure and we have a giraffe. <laughs> but this giraffe is human because, you know, how many giraffes walk around in plaid pants and a pocketbook and it's part of a um, happy school day story. Tom Cullen is the student 
And you look at his thing and you're like, well, wait, but I see what he did. What he did was he took the idea of a storytelling and sort of a childish approach to it, as in I'm going to tell children a story. And he did it of an engineer moving some trains. And it was a really good bounce off that particular piece. The students here um, were a little bit more literal in their inspiration, but they didn't copy. They, they did what they saw in the piece and added their own experience. Kristen is laying down and Nevla has sitting up, but sitting in a different direction and in a different media than the actual oil painting. And then we kind of come around here and we have this piece of the cabinet and the look um, of this painting. And the student who bounced off this was Braden Roger, and he did a digital print. But when you look at it, the collection in the curio cabinet, it seems like he did a collection. And the hand is repeated in different aspects. And if you notice in this painting, there's two different hands. So that was his idea of inspiration. This one here is rather intriguing because it's, you know, mother and child, it's a very realistic rendering of a mother holding a child. The student who used this as inspiration, Marcia, what she did was sort of a human holding the world. And my take on it is that she saw within that the whole Mother Earth um, sort of approach and expanded it to include like all of humanity. But she has like a map inside that this person is holding on to. And that's an interesting um, interpretation of what this painting meant to that student. This student chose to do the media. And this is a print. You can tell that it is exactly um, not like the original print that's done by Jim Collins, who is a very well-known artist. But what she did was she took the idea of printmaking and created her own print and that was her inspiration off this piece that he did. Along here we have the angels. This was done by Andrew Moore, and it's a mixed media piece. And Elisa did her, her piece, which she did not give a title to, but you can see it's kind of interesting how she did the scarf over the um, woman and it reflects the angel wings that are in Andrew's pieces. Also, there's an obvious reference that, you know, the angels and she appears to be praying because she's down on her knees. And I believe that that's um, what she took out of looking at this painting and why she picked it in particular. Um, this one here, which is like one of my favorites, I must say, and it's called Dark Passenger and it's by Victor Chab. So it's very abstract as in terms of being a human figure. And Phoenix Carpenter did this one and you can see the reflection of the shapes in his piece that he chose to the reflection of the shapes in um, Victor's piece. And also just he extended the arms and made two figures instead of one that are sort of dancing. And we come over here and again, this student Josh also reflected the shapes um, and the way that the figures are. And it's a pretty straightforward sort of inspiration, but it's also very creative. It's very colorful, where this one is more of a monotone. Both these students uh, chose to go into a different color palette to express their inspiration. We come around here and we have a Stan Charon, and it's a profile portrait. And the students that um, chose that were KG, Sarah, and Brooklyn Haywood. The one that's done by Sarah is also a profile. So you could say it's the most similar, but not necessarily because if you look at the top one where she's tearing, it reflects the dripping of the paint here and also down in Blindsided by Brooklyn Haywood, Harwood is also reflecting the dripping of this particular painting. This one here, um, this is a batik, 
And the batik was done by Nalini Mehta. And the two students that chose this, one of them did the actual technique, not unlike the printmaking over in the other corner, where they chose to do the same sort of style and technique rather than the image of this particular work. Whereas this student here, Isabella, just calls her piece Despair, Deceit, and Destruction. Um, and this piece that she bounced off of is called The Waiting is Return. It's an interesting sort of title thing. But what she chose to do was the vase and the um, coffee pot, teapot, and created it in a 3D form. And I think that it's really a unique take on picking a part of an inspiration and then creating it in your own way. So as you walk around this whole exhibit, you can see what the students have done with what they were given and I have to applaud and congratulate them and the teachers, um, Sharon Squibb and Kimberly Mulberry, who and mentored them through this um, particular process. What they did was they showed them all of the examples of art from the acquisitions and then let them pick the one and talk them through how they were going to approach it, but pretty much decided that they should do what they felt they were inspired to do to create the pieces. So just made sure they had the materials necessary and the time to do it.